Hello, freshmen. Welcome to week two of your remote school. How exciting is that? Woohoo, woohoo, yay, yay, yay. Okay, enough excitement about that. This is to continue the introduction to chapters three and four. So when you did yesterday's reflection um, out of the textbook, One Solitary Life, one of the comments that Emperor Napoleon I made was that millions of men would die for Jesus. He didn't mean they were going to die. He meant they would choose to die. They would willingly die for him. And that was true in the ancient day, and it's true today. So we're going to look at the martyrs of the church. It's going to be in two parts. The first screencast uh, recording today is the ancient church, and the screencast recording for tomorrow is the modern church. And there's work that follows both of these screencasts. So be sure to go back to the instructional plan when you finish watching. All right, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So here we go. That Greek word is martyr, um, written in Greek and then in English. It literally means witness. So they were giving witness to Jesus. So back in the ancient day, the first question is who was persecuting them? So the Jewish leaders were persecuting them. You knew that. Um, and then the Roman leaders began to persecute the Christians, but for two very different reasons. Uh, the Jewish leaders lived a very nice life under the Roman occupation, as long as they were in control of the Jewish people through the religion. So they did not want to lose control. They had a lot to lose if they weren't in charge. The Romans had a different reason. They believed that the emperor was a god. So as soon as you weren't willing to worship the emperor, then you were committing treason against the Roman Empire, against the emperor. Um, it probably sounds strange to you to consider the emperor as a god, but it's been known in our modern day. Um, back in World War II, the emperor of Japan was seen as a god. Um, and in our current modern day, the Jong-un family in North Korea are seen as gods. They are a god, and they are worshipped by those people. It's the only, you know, allowable religion. So Christians were never going to worship the emperor. It's a complete and total violation of the first commandment, right? No other god besides me. And they were susceptible to being persecuted. And I hope you can see that this list sounds a little bit like bullying. Why is someone susceptible to be bullied? They're alone. They don't have friends. They don't just go along with everybody. They maybe are into something that the you know general group's not into. Maybe they're not into all the sports you're into. Maybe they're into something else. Certainly, they have no power. If they had power, they would not be persecuted or bullied, right? So that list should make total sense to you why the Christians were easily, easily persecuted. No one was safe from it in the ancient day, no one. Um, and you could be accused by anyone. You could be accused, and some were, even by your own family, your neighbors. It was ugly. It was supposed to be ugly. They wanted other people to be afraid of what was happening so that they would leave the Christian faith, right? If I can see this ugliness happening to you, then and I don't want it for me, then I might stop being a Christian. It's the idea of a crucifixion, right? It was painful. It was public. You were lifted high on the cross. The cross was up on a hill. They wanted people to know, right? They were trying to use it as a deterrent. So you could say no. Um, but it created problems. Remember the problems St. Paul had when he converted and then tried to join the Christians in Jerusalem and the apostles there? He had all kind of difficulty. So if you denied Christ and worshiped the emperor, but then tried to come back and be an active Christian, it was problematic for you. It was tough. So one caveat before I go on, and that is, remember the part where it's gruesome? So you might not like hearing about any of this. It's not really photos. 
uh, not in the ancient day, in my modern conversation, I have some photos, but these are artist representations, but still um, discussing them is not going to be pretty. It wasn't meant to be, right? So Polycarp is an early martyr. He was 86. I mean, what is that, like your great grandpa or something? Um, that's craziness that he is going to be uh, murdered for his faith in Christ. He was fleeing his um, captured captors. He was fleeing his capture, and he had a dream, and he understood it to mean that he should accept his martyrdom. He says, Jesus never did me wrong, and I'm not going to wrong him. So I'm interested in this um, artist's representation because I think he looks pretty buff there for an 86-year-old guy. But still, um, all of that aside, it was uh, there's nothing light about what happened to him. Lawrence is another early martyr, very early martyr, and he was also killed as an old man. He's not shown as an older man in the um, picture that follows here. Um, the Pope he was serving was being being martyred. Um, remember when we looked at a list of popes sometime ever ago, how so many of the early popes are saint somebody or other, saint somebody or other. That's because they were martyred. So um, the martyrdom was the sort of the proof of their sainthood. So he told Lawrence, uh, don't worry, you're going to be killed too. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. So Lawrence was given a stay of execution for three days, but how he handled it is what led him to his martyrdom. He was grilled to death on a barbecue. These are two women. I didn't want you to think that um, it was only men who were martyred. This is uh, Perpetua and Felicity. They were a mistress and her slave. They um, were killed by gladiators in the arena. They had to wait for their martyrdom because um, Felicity was pregnant. And in Roman law at the time, you couldn't kill a pregnant woman because the baby was somebody's property. So you couldn't destroy the property. You know, you could kill the mother, but only after the baby had been born. This is Tarsissus. He agreed to take the Eucharist and he was killed trying to protect the Eucharist. And I think of him sometimes, you know, killed to protect the Eucharist and you guys approach the Eucharist chewing gum on one side and the Eucharist on the other. I think he took the body of Christ more seriously than some of you. Ignatius is an interesting person in the early church. You can look at the bottom and see who he was. Um, he is also older when he is going to be martyred. They traveled Ignatius in a caravan of people as he was going to where he's going to be executed, he was going to be fed to the wild animals, and those animals were in cages traveling in the caravan. So he was kind of faced with it every single day, how he was going to die. They were not old either. This is a young woman. In her picture, you can see a palm branch for victory, right? She triumphed in the end. Agnus in Latin is lamb. We say Agnus Dei. Some of you might know that prayer from the Mass, Agnus Dei. It's often sung, so you might even know that song. 
Um, I chose this person because I have a picture of the actual arena where she suffered. It was considered sport. And people would go to watch the sport with the Christian persecutions, to watch them be fed to the wild animals or to fight the gladiators or I'm not sure why you would go watch that, but many people did. So this is an artist picture of it. Notice the Christians who are being burned as torches around the arena. The animals were in cages beneath the arena. I have some pictures where you can see that better later. And they would be released up onto the field. This is the actual arena. They left up one of the posts. You can see it there. The most famous of those arenas still stands. It's in Rome, Italy. It's called uh, the Colosseum. So it took a lot of people to support this. Um, it's, it is like bullying, right? If a bunch of people stand around watching, and it's going to continue. So there were different sections. You bought tickets. You had seats, signed seats. If you go to Rome at the Colosseum, you can even see the seat numbers. The Roman numerals are carved into the seats. Still, some of them have not worn away. And you can see the section numbers. Or There were concourses where people were out selling things. Those of you who have been down to like uh, Little Caesars Arena, or Ford Field or um, Comerica Park, then you know you know what that looked like. It looked just like that back in the day. And the, the jail cells for the victims and the cages for the wild animals and the ready areas for the gladiators, those were all underground. This gives you a cross-section sort of look, how it would have looked back in the day. That's a lot of people coming to watch murder. This is what's left today of the Colosseum in Rome. But it gives you an idea of its scale. Here's an overhead view. Remember back in the day that center part uh, would have been covered over. That would have been the field. You're sort of looking down into the ready area and the cages and the jail cells but you would not have been able to see them back in the day. Pope John Paul II dedicated it to the blood of the martyrs. You can see there's a large cross to it on the left-hand side of that picture. You see it kind of near the bottom of the stands. It's sometimes said that the blood of the early martyrs watered the seeds of faith, that without their blood, the church would not have grown the way that it did. And that could be very, very true. Because when someone's willing to die for something, you know the value of it. It is, it is in fact, where we started this whole you know, presentation on martyrs. It's a witness, and it is a powerful witness. Okay then, so you're going to go back to the instructional plan, take a look at those questions. If you need to play this again and look at those first slides, you're welcome to do that. So try and be pleasant at home today. Do something kind or nice for someone. Um, remember, everyone is a little stressed out, not just you. So try and think beyond yourself today. God bless you.